Chapter 13. Oliver gave me a funny look. A needy look. He reached out and brushed the flyaway hair back from my face, barely skimming my cheek. My stomach clamped down in nerves as he leaned closer. Then softly his lips were on mine. I felt confused. Two different emotions rushed through me at the same time. A murderous rage, and a feeling of overwhelming desire to be happy. Slowly I pulled away from him and looked at him, brushing my fingertips lightly across his lower lip and then wove his fingers through mine. Something was happening to me. We were standing in shadows and the voices of the other kids and teachers seemed distant but I could see their dark bodies etched clearly against the big bonfire they had built on the large stretch of sand between the campsite and the edge of the lake. We should get back, I said. His shoulder brushed mine as he leaned closer and whispered in my ear, you don't have to go. I did not want to go. He sat down on the edge of the dock, letting his legs dangle over the side and pulled me down to sit beside him. The dock was high enough so that our feet did not touch the cold, dark water. A slight breeze swirled around us making me feel a little cold. I turned around to face Oliver. So are you ever? He raised his eyes to meet mine. Was he looking at me? Going to kiss me again? He asked softly as the one side of his mouth pulled up in an amused smile. Flustered I said no. That's not what I was going to say. He chuckled softly as he nudged me playfully. I know. What did you want to know? I. I forgot what I was going to say. I looked down at the water below us, and the way the glow from the bonfire reflected off the peak of the ripples the breeze was creating. My legs swung backwards and forwards. He shook his head. Remember when I said earlier today, we needed to talk. I shrugged my shoulders without looking back at him, pretending to be mesmerized by the water. It's really dark out here, he said as he looked over his shoulder at the tall dark trees behind us. It makes it easier to see the stars, I said, looking up at the sky. Oliver lay back on the dock. There are so many, he said. That's because there's no moon. He laughed softly. The moon is still there, we just can't see it. I am like the moon. I eased myself down next to him and we both watched the sky in silence. You know, he said quietly. I'm glad I kissed you. At first I thought I shouldn't have done it. It was too soon and I'm not even sure if. Then why? Why would he kiss me if he was not sure he wanted to? Did he think he would get his way with me easily? Did he imagine we would go all the way, here in the dark, just the two of us? I know I am not the first girl he had kissed, with whom he had been alone in the dark. Will I even be the last? If what? I asked softly. He lifted his head off the dock and leaned on his elbow, then tilted his head toward me and leaned closer, kissing me softly on the lips. He pulled away and then moved his mouth to my cheek, nose, eyes, brow, his kisses followed a trail determined by him. I could barely breathe. He stopped, his face hovering an inch above mine. I could not read his expression, and I was not sure if it was because there was hardly any light or if he was trying to hide his emotions. I opened my mouth to say something sarcastic to hide the way I was feeling. What if? He asked before he kissed me. His hands rested on the waistband of my jeans and he looped his fingers through the belt loop on one side to pull me onto my side to face him. My hands came up to his chest to push him away. What's wrong? Oliver asked, his lips still so close they brushed mine as he spoke. Not too fast, I said. As slow as you want, he said as his warm hand slid under the hem of my t-shirt. My top crept up, exposing my stomach to the night chill. He traced his finger along my waist while kissing the side of my neck. Of course I had imagined being kissed like this, but the reality was so much more intense. As Oliver slid his hand higher up my waist, I put my hand on top of his, not sure if I wanted to never move again or if I wanted to make him stop. I was conflicted. My body wanted him to continue to see where this would lead. The voice in my head warned me he was only using me. He would break my heart. 
If I let him continue, he would discard me like a used rag. Too fast? He asked, and he sounded concerned. I think so, yes, I said softly. Slowly, he pulled his hand out from under mine, and making small lazy circles on my skin, which gave me goosebumps. He moved his hand slowly down my waist until his hand was resting on the waistband of my jeans again.